Welcome to Weekly Prayer. It's a lovely day. It's a good day to vote. It's dry and sunny. But other than that mention of voting, this will be a politics-free space today. So enjoy it. It may be the only one you get. We'll be looking at Matthew 9 and verses 1 to 8, um, where Jesus has his first argument with the Pharisees in Matthew's Gospel anyway. So let's start with prayer. Lord, thank you so much that we are individuals before you, but that we're also part of a greater community. May we feel that community of saints around us, and may we find your beating heart in the words of Scripture. Amen. So without any more ado, the scripture itself, Matthew 9, 1 to 8. And after getting into the boat, he crossed the water and came to his own town. And just then some people were carrying a paralysed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk. But so that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Stand up. Take up your bed and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were full of awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to a human being. I love this reading. It's the first time Jesus seems to have a dispute in Matthew's Gospel. And as levels of dispute go, it's not that high. But he makes wants us to be aware that not everybody agreed with what he's doing. There's a lot of things about the scripture that I really like. I love the mundanity of it. He gets into a boat and crosses the river. You may as well say he got on the bus and crossed the city. It's that level of detail. And when he gets off the bus, there's people waiting for him. Now that's hard, because it means there's no escape from work or ministry. There's just no escape for Jesus. Wherever he goes, he is recognised. And since this is early in his ministry, it tells you that he's having a big impact very quickly. And Jesus sees the faith of the people. Now isn't it interesting that he doesn't see the faith of the man? He just sees the faith of the people. And he responds to their faith. So when people say to you, you must have faith to be healed, you might want to think about this scripture. Because it's not the man's faith, it's the faith of the crowd around him. Alternatively, you could read into it and say, well, he wouldn't be there unless, they want, unless he wanted to be. But we don't know that. He was par paralytic. He, could, he couldn't argue where he wanted to be. Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. It sounds to me like the man was also very low and depressed. And perhaps not unsurprising, he's trapped on a bed. And some of the scribes and the Pharisees said to themselves, this man is blaspheming. Now, I've always assumed until fairly recently that must mean they were speaking to each other. But the next line gives that a lie. It says, Jesus perceiving their thoughts. So there must be something about their body language and the way they were looking at it or behaving that made Jesus a little irritated. He's not angry at this point, he's just irritated 
way I read it. He says, why do you think evil? All, all, all these bad things. This is something wonderful. And then he's, to show that he is the son of God, really, he says, get up and walk. And the man gets up and walks. But how often in life, I wonder, have we heard good news from somebody else and just not really given it the credit it deserves? Stood back a little bit. That's how I see the Pharisees just standing back a little bit. And what's he up to? Suspicious of his nature. And the bit about which is easier to say when I was young, I, I, I remember trying to say both of those lines. And, yeah, neither's easier than the other. And Jesus says, it's quite remarkable, you know, that, that Jesus is able to say, it's as easy to change the nature of something as it is to, to say it, really. This man can't move, so I tell him to move, and he moves. It's just as easy as to say, stay where you are. You know, it's fine. I find that really quite remarkable. That it took no extra effort from Jesus to heal the man. And yet when we worry about the sick in our own church or somewhere else, we, 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 we call an evening of prayer an evening of fasting and prayer or some such thing, and we will worry about things, but not with Jesus. Jesus just does it. So I want to say, make me more like Jesus. I don't want the stress of worry. Actually, I really want to say that. That's what I really want to say today. Make us more like Jesus. No stress. No worry, just do it. And when people object, just ask them, is it easier to let bad things happen or to do good? Because that really is the question we're being asked. I think it's a good question. Is it easier to allow a bad situation or to do good? I think I know the answer, really, don't you? Let's pray. Oh, Lord. Sometimes the lessons you want to show us are so simple and yet so complex for us to implement. And Lord, in, in Matthew's Gospel here, it's the first time you're in dispute. And it's easy to just brush past that. But it must have been difficult to know that there are those there that actually questioned your right to heal. Lord, we pray that we won't question people's right to serve you. I pray, Lord, that we won't question that right of people to be the people they are. In Jesus' name be with us. Amen. Well, have a great day. If you're reading this or listening to this early in the day and you don't think you can get to vote, but would like to, please phone, phone me You'll probably have my number or contact somebody else from the church and we'll be pleased to get you to the polling stations. God bless you. And don't forget to take your video, your your personal ID with your photo on it, your driver's license, your passport, that sort of stuff. God bless you. Have a great day. Amen.